Hello and welcome to my Mass Effect Andromeda E3 trailer breakdown and analysis. So the trailer opens with this scene, a barren rocky desert with organic life forms flying overhead. What seems to be some kind of scanner is overlaying the screen, and a pink glowing light is seen in the right, but no other detail can be seen of this. The screen transitions and it's clear that we're looking at some kind of interactive interface. If we freeze frame here, then we see the letters A, R and K, which appears after each slide, which fits in with this picture that was tweeted out by a Bioware developer some time ago. It seems that ARC, or ARCCON, is going to be some kind of leading military organisation, certainly one of importance in any case. The next slide shows an icy looking planet, though there is flowing water next to a reddish cave, which does suggest that it's not completely uninhabitable. After that, we see a poisonous looking planet, though there is plant life and large space beetles, so again, there's signs of life here. The next slide is a rocky looking planet with zero gravity, not much to see here. And next we have a lush looking environment, with plenty of plants and animal life. There's a huge flying creature which does look like it's some kind of huge alien life form. The screen pans out and then we see that an armoured hand is swiping the screen across, this time to a volcanic and stormy looking environment, and then it swipes back to the original desert environment. One thing I noticed was that the scanner was focused on geological structures in every single one of the slides. This seems to indicate that our guy is looking for something contained within the rocks themselves. A survey that was leaked a while back does back this point too. It specifically states that the player will, quote, scour the solar systems to find valuable resources and blueprints of long forgotten alien technology. The song choice is also pretty interesting too. The song's called Ghost Riders in the Sky by Johnny Cash, a western theme song. Perhaps this will be an open world space western, or perhaps the editors just thought it would be a pretty cool song to use. Both answers are equally plausible. We pan out further and see a globe appear on the bottom centre of the screen, an image that's similar to this bit of concept art which was released on N7 Day. As hinted by developers, this game will have a heavy emphasis on exploration in a huge number of different open world locations. Next, we pan to an interactive map, which shows the abbreviation of many different solar systems or planets, and then a highlighted location named Faster Than Light Destination. One observation that I made which may prove interesting is that the Andromeda Galaxy is 2.5 million light years away. The Reapers could supposedly travel at 11,000 times the speed of light, which by calculation means that it would take them 225 years or so to reach the Andromeda Galaxy from Earth. Which in the greater scheme of things isn't actually that much, and it does make actually reaching Andromeda a very possible journey to make. Anyway, the soldier then appears to travel through a wormhole. For those who don't know, a wormhole is basically this. You take a shortcut through space-time rather than going from conventional A to B, further proving that this would be a totally reasonable journey to make, assuming that the technology exists for it, of course. Anyway, then we arrive at the desert-looking planet. Our soldier opens up his Omni-Tool and draws his Carnifex pistol, walking towards the camera which in turn shows his N7 badge on his armour. This is an N7 operative. On the Bioware blog, the devs confirm that this is not the player controlled character though, which leads to some pretty interesting speculation and theories. Could this be an antagonist rather than the player itself? A rival? Maybe even a reaper indoctrinated version of Commander Shepard? The theories are pretty extensive here, so I won't get into them in too much detail. The scene starts and we see an M40 Mako appear on the screen. What sounds like a reaper horn sounds, but I imagine this is just a recycled sound effect rather than anything significant. There's no observed turret on the Mako, but Mike Gamble did confirm that the Mako will be customisable at Comic-Con, so this could explain that away. And then we see jetpacks, similar to the ones the Armageturians had in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, with the N7 soldier ascending a cliffside before standing on top of the rocks. A huge alien-like structure bursts through the ground while a soldier runs into battle. The structure's size really gets put into proportion here, as it's still rising out of the ground to the right of the squad as they charge. 
In the squad, we catch a glimpse of a Krogan and a female squad mate, perhaps Asari or Human, both N7. In the survey leak, we were told that an Asari named Cora and a Krogan named Drak would be squad mates of yours. These may be those particular squad mates. The main guy shields break, as we see the enemy appear, the source of the laser fire. They appear to be humanoid in size, and their body shape and legs do prove that they're alien, perhaps armoured. The soldier uses his jetpack and then draws his Omniblade, in an animation that looks remarkably similar to the Armageturian heavy melee in Mass Effect 3. And there we have it, Mass Effect Andromeda trailer broken down. I'll be covering all of Mass Effect Andromeda news as it comes up, including further trailer breakdowns and speculation videos. I'll post the survey leak that I was referring to in the description, as well as the uncut trailer itself. Thanks for watching, goodbye.